Yeah, I really like the place here. It's really testing, cool. testing. One, two, three. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Like, yeah, I also came on phone here by accident. Um, not by accident, not really. I searched, is there any like Pure Land temple we have around this area? It's very good. I, I really like it. I really like it. Yeah. And so, did you, did you like, uh, like, since, uh, you know, we all here know each other, we would like to know more about you, Kenny. Um, did you come here by yourself or with parents? My mom. With your mom? One, uh, my mom, my grandma is at home sleeping. Oh, sleep that's really nice. And then, um, you, whole fam uh, you and mom always come here every weekend for volunteering? No, uh, at first time. I can, obviously, I, I really like to do volunteering. It's really good. That's good, that's good. I, and, uh, I, really, I really want to come here more. Oh, okay. And, and uh, your mom, Sharon, right? Uh, yes, yes. Um, Miss Sharon, she told me that you like to learn the Fa Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, obviously, you yeah. can co contact her more, saying that I want to come here more. I really no worries, no worries. Right now, I should switch the tempo around. Instead of going to Shaolin Tempo, I think I should come here. Oh, you went to Shaolin before? Yes. So you can teach her some Kung Fu techniques? No, I, I, I actually don't. I'm, I'm not good at Kung Fu techniques. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. But obviously, yeah. Not, 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 not the time now. I, mm. I think here this is more important. The, the going the Dharma. To, the, yeah. Going to Paraland is actually more important. That's true. That's true. And um, that's what we're trying to do in the first place is to you know calm ourselves down. You know, get everyone like warm up a bit. Well, physically and mentally. Um, and um, and also today we already in our seventh or eighth. See, I lost count. Seven or eighth. Um, uh, iter I mean, sessions on the Buddha story. So, you know, let me bring you in what we've been learning and uh, everyone else. I can share my Buddha story as well. Yeah, yeah, on. one at a time, one at a time. So, so first, uh, we'd like to uh, welcome Kenny to our group and welcome back, everyone. I know it's been like, how many, a month uh, since we met. Um, and uh, we've been sharing the story of Buddha for uh, six or seven sessions. We learn about the Buddha's family, roughly. We learn about how he came to realize there is no other way other than the path he pursued in order to seek liberation from this um, cycle of birth and death and death and birth. And we call it, Buddha called it suffering. And suffering comes in many forms, in the forms of unable to get what you want is a suffering. What you want, what you love, what you cherish will go away one day. It's a suffering. Uh, life and death itself, obviously, the endless you know process change is a suffering because and 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 you're helpless against it is a form of suffering, and uh, unable to control you know your mind, wandering thoughts and you know seeing yourself you know repeating the habits that is destructive is a suffering. So those are the um, Four Noble Truths. Sufferings leads uh, because of accumulation of sufferings. Suffering, there is suffering, there is accumulation of suffering. There is a cessation of suffering. You know, elimination of suffering. How do we do that? What we're trying to do now is part of it. And then the, ultimately, when you, feel, when you cease the suffering, you achieve nirvana. Nirvana is like, in, in lack of a better word, it's the other side. As in, you arrived at the shore, uh, liberate from the suffering. So basically, we, we've been trying to go back to the basics of what Buddha Shaimuni has taught us. And then we link this to what we're learning right now as a, how to say, pure land, which is crystallized over thousands of years by countless masters. So um, before that, uh, what we learned about is how Buddha attained enlightenment at the age of 30. How many of you? Oh, now let's do that. <laughs> How many of us are closed above or below to age of thirty? Don't have to state your age. Twenty. 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 Very young. Yeah, ten years to go. Come All right. Um, I think I would believe uh, most of us already like achieve thirty or above it, right? And using Buddha as a standard. Right? Because that's how we learn Buddhism. We have someone to set a standard. Everyone has their own time to mature. Everyone has their own time to achieve enlightenment. But if you look at histories, this is just a little um, interesting information. Confucius say, San Shi Ali. You know? Confucius say, I will establish myself at the age of 30. A Buddha has achieved enlightenment at the age of 30. And other than these two prominent figures, I'm pretty sure there are a few others that have reached that age. 
and, and start to crystallize. It's just telling us as a human beings, 30 is the place where we start building your own, you know, career, teachings, foundations. Yeah. I think age doesn't really matter. Age doesn't matter. The point is not the age. It's just telling us there is a stage in life because life and death, right? And each of us has stage, but it might be very depends on our psychology and upbringing. But the point is, at certain age, at certain stage, we use age as a demo- denominator of our stage, like right, where I'm doing. We just use that as a reference. It doesn't have to be like, oh no, I did nothing in 30, so yeah, I'm too late. No, the point is looking at them, understanding that, okay, they have done this at the age of 30. Maybe for me, it's 60. Maybe for me, it's 70. Right? It takes me twice as long as him. And what I want to say is it encouraged me when I looked at Master Ying Guang's teaching. All right, I'm, I'm going to say who Master Ying Guang is. Master Ying Guang is the patriarch of the uh, modern, you have heard of the Ying Guang Dasi, right? Pure Land School our, um, you know, in China. And he's the one that trying to get Buddhism back to the basics without all the overly decorated part, you know, the religious part, or the, um, you know, Gan Jing Chan, those kind of um, offer money to services for the disease, which is the aberration or deviation of Buddhism's point. It's an education. It's not ceremony. It's not just, you know, um, singing and dancing. It all has a point towards education. This is for education. It's not for the dead. It is for the dead, but it's not the main point. The main point is for everyone to attain enlightenment, but uh, using this as a means to that end. So, um, Master Ying Guang himself achieved that level at age of 60. I asked myself, like, yes, I'm useless right now. I might not feeling myself, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm being a, a wasteful person, wasting my time and uh, being useless. And, and, and then I remind myself, Master Ying Guang has, you know, been in the library for decades. The library of Buddhists, one of the temples back in China. Uh, nationalist era and they were doing the um, he's just doing the you know tidying up the sutras you know there are thousands of sutras in in the monasteries and he's been doing that until the age of 60 before some lay person who was prominent went up to the temple and have a chat with Master Ying Guang Master Ying Guang was like yeah okay and then he shared and the point he shared is straight to the point someone who has crystallized the teaching in a very straightforward manner like someone who gets it without using too much words all right and 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 he can use one piece of letter and just help a lot of people and he can go straight to your heart and understand the core of the issues so someone with such a sharp per- penetration on life sharp understanding acute precise understanding of life is not an ordinary person and then when everyone heard of him he was published in the back then there's no TV there's no TikToks or anything so he was published in the um, magazines uh, like those weekly magazines Q&A like Master Ching Gong's um, Q&A as well back in the 90s and then everyone was like oh holy moly this guy knows everything every problems we're trying to solve he gets it and then he's not a flaunty person he don't show off himself or anything he was just in his li- nice little library doing his thing his duty as a monk doing his job, getting by, you know, learn precepts, Chan Amitofo, and then, and then someone met him. The condition has arrived and it flourished, flourished into his propagation without him trying to. He's, he's, he's just accord with the condition. But before that, he has abided his time for decades, right? And that 10 years of his fame before he passed away, which went to Nirvana, Pure Land, 10 years, 60 to 70, I think, has influenced since then, hundreds of years to come. Master Ching Kong is un- one of the influence. Look at how many people he influenced. Master Ching Kong's teacher, Li Binan Lao Ji Si, Mr. Li, who is a lay person, he also has influenced thousands of people in Taiwan. All right? Before he went to Taiwan in China, he influenced a lot. And he, their influence will pass down. And you can see in the association of uh, Master Ching Kong's friends, Right in his first year anniversary, people from different religions doesn't have to be Buddhist. You know, it can be Islam and anything. They were influenced by him, by his compassion, by.
by his kindness. So he crystallized that 10 years, right? But that 10 years has influenced thousands of years to come. And I have faith in that. That 10 years is crystallized. So every one of you might not have the same timeline as these sages, but you have your own timeline that you have to think about right now. Like what I'm pouring it right now is part of that crystallization. Anything that is impure, which is greed, hatred, ignorance, tan chen si, uh, and, and, and uh, arrogance, man, and then dao yi, you know, the three poisons plus these two, will taint that progress. But we need to move on. Yes? That's why I, I wish to be a monk. Hmm? I wish to be a monk. That's what we're doing now, step by step. Right? Everyone has their own way to express the Dharma. Right? You don't have to be this or that, but if you already set your stone in that form as a monk, as a doctor, as a psychologist, as a lawyer, as a accountant, <laughs> as a banker, doesn't matter. Everyone has their own expression, all right? And, and, and being a monk, right, is the most honorable task in the world, which I actually emphasize, like, why is a monk being respected? Not because, yeah. you know, status. That is secondary. You, you don't care about status. You That's right. care about how to help other people. That's right. Help other people, you feel very happy all mm. the time. So yes. Misconception of the monk back in the early times, early times as in our, you know, that's yeah. just in Chinese circle, yes, right? As a monk, you yeah. get all the, mm. it, the living that enough for you to survive already. So, mm. is this all right? Like, you don't ask for cause, but it's like, it's enough for you to survive already, so it's fine. Mm. That's right. So, so the whole point of this is someone needs to do the job of spreading the teachings. You know, we have our own circles to spread our own teach, uh, the teachings we learn from the teachers. And uh, being a monk is a professional, like 100% doing this. Because we, the lay Buddhists will do their own family stuff and they will portion one part for the temple, the Dharma. But as a monk, you have to put 120% because everything you have is from everyone else. Not by our own production. Oh, obviously, that's right. You, you try to when, when people give you things, you give to other people again, so it just keeps spreading. That's right. But, but we see all of it. Mm. The the offering, the six para, parameters. Yeah, you six do. parameters. Yes. Offerings. Mm. So then you, you get get there straight away. So yeah. Mm. So he, he, he goes straight to the point now. So. <laughs> The six parameter, right? The giving. All of it is extremely easy to do. You just keep, keep giving people stuff. You just keep giving. But, but, Habits, but, right? Yeah. But the stuff is actually good. Mm. The stuff, if you feel like you don't like it, don't give to other people. Mm-hmm. You just give the things that's that you're willing to give. Yes. That's right. I, I give a lot of it. That's good. That's but good. You just give the stuff that's actually good and you like it and you mm. give it up. The things you really like, if you can give, then it's really good. Mm. When, when you feel like it's the correct people to give, then you give. Mm. You only give what you're willing to give. You, um, when you give, you don't regret it. That's why you only yeah. pick the one that you're willing to give. Yes. Not, not, not the mm. things that it's like, you don't like. If the things you give is you don't like and you give, that's not actually giving. What do you guys, what do you guys think about it? The practice of giving. What should it be like? Should it be something that you restrict to something only you like? Right? Yes. Or, or, or you think you can everything, yeah. push a little bit but things that you feel like is, is good, is good. Things yeah. that you feel like is good, and yeah. the things you like. The things that is good, then you give. Hold on to the thought. Let me share you something. Master Shin Kong was very young, back then, 20 plus age, when he was in Taiwan. You know, the, the story goes, he's in Taiwan. And he worked as the um, lowly public servant in uh, the nationalist government back then. And he only got like a few dollars equivalent of a uh, monthly salary. His teacher, Mr. Lee, he wasn't the monk back then, Master Ching Kong, he was Mr. Xu, uh, lay person, his lay name. So Master Ching Kong uh, back then was under Mr. Lee, he still learned Buddhism. He, he's about to be a monk, but he still worked like us, every one of us. And his salary is very low, right? A few dollars a month, just enough to get by. And then his teacher say, there is an event going on. You know, this is a Dharma event. You know, so give me whatever you can gift. And then he's like, here's all I have. Please take whatever you need. So Master Ching Kong said, I mean, uh, his teacher said 10 cents. So he only has $3 worth of US dollars per month. And then 10 cents, 
And then he's like, yeah, 10 cents is all right. What about one dollar? I was like, whoa, imagine one third of your salary. Okay, gone. So one dollar. So he felt a bit reluctant. Um, and, and then he felt like, oh, it's a bit hard. But after the teacher did that giving, and then he expressed that concern to his teacher, Mr. Lee. And Mr. Lee was like, um, Master Lee was like, um, giving, right, is something that you need to push a little bit outside that boundary. Because giving means letting go of the possession, expanding your boundaries so that you can have the, like Buddha, he ultimately, Bodhisattva, right, ultimately can give their own body in a way of eyeballs, you know, even in the Buddha story, I can give one eye to you because they have the Santong. I'll just hold on for a second. And then this is how it, this is how it practiced. So Master Ching Kong eventually from one dollars, right, he start to, you know, learn to push a little bit. And then he found his fortune grows in a sense. That's the cause and effect element. The more you give, the more you get, the more you get, the more you give. And then he expand, expand, expand. Obviously people understood that his wealth is not because he become a monk later. The thing that people donate to his name is millions of dollars. But he never used that on his own you know, LV bags or the cars or something. He never used that. He only used it for Han Institute, the, not, not this one, but this one is by the locals. Um, Han Institute's, um, all this, you know, the office in Paris, the satellite television that pioneers um, propagation of Buddhism in, um, online. So this is how he learned to give. And the more he gives, the more people give to him. Sorry, yeah. I think in terms, if you're like, if you don't want to be a mom, and if you're like, just like normal person, mm. then there's actually a good, good app for buying clothes and shoes in an extremely low price. Mm. It's called AliExpress. From oh. China. I heard of it. Yeah, yeah. I, I purchased. This came from AliExpress, by the way. Oh, really? Yes, that's right. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's very convenient. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Now I know. Now you know, right? You can get it from AliExpress and practice at home. Okay. Um, so back to our Buddha story, right? Um, now we have learned about Buddha again, like Taman. He went out. Giving. giving. Yeah. Giving, right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, sorry, giving. Just as now, I give out the AliExpress that you say it's AliExpress. Sorry. Come back to you. And then you can buy this as well. Yeah. So, um, so our, our Buddha, right, has uh, finished his um, teaching from the um, Lu Ye Yuan. Uh, I think it's the Deer Park. And he has accepted the first five disciples. Uh, the Four Noble Truths as the first Dharma, Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, has complete. So Buddhism is established. This is what Buddhism is. It, it, it consists of this tree um, in terms of physical form. And then he went to preach and asked everyone, you all have attained enlightenment. Now he, you know, from each of them, five of them, branch out into 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 50, hundreds, it multiples. And then Buddha has told them, none of you should go in one same direction. Go into 10 directions wherever you go, spread the word. And he spread the words, and he himself will go to the Uru Villa village. And there is where he met Kashyapa. Remember, there is a confusion in Chinese, especially because we've been chanting all the sutra all the time. Jia Se Kashyapa. There are, it's a common name like Li, like, you know, like Smith. So Kashyapa, we're kind of confused. Is this Kashyapa that Kashyapa? Because the famous Maha Kashyapa, Da Jia She Junze, is the top 10 disciples of Shaimin Buddha. And he's the one who passed, who understands the Buddha's heart. That means without saying, he understands what it means, what is enlightenment. He, he entered the same point, same perspective as Buddha. Yeah. He see what the Buddha sees, you know, and that is Zen. Have you guys heard of Zen? Chan, Chan Zhong, Zen Buddhism. Oh, I yeah. think I have a book previously read in the hospital when I was sick. Yeah. 
It's actually Buddha's heart. Buddha's heart, yeah? Actually, mm. there's a book. Forcing. Mm. There's actually a book. Yes, everyone should read but I, You can share the link to me and then I'll have a look. I, I, I don't have to link. I, I might need to ask my mom for No worries, yeah. Of but course, I, we have I, the WhatsApp. Everyone has their book, but that's it. That's right, that's right. Yeah. You can share it to me or through mom, your mom. You can I, share I, it I'm to fine because I, I, it's, it's, it's tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take your time. Slow down, slow down. No, no, no rush. So, um, Buddha's heart. He, he attained the Buddha's heart. Literally. As in, he understands what the Buddha sees beyond the shapes and beyond the form. And, and that is Mahakashyapa. That Mahakashyapa is different from this Kashyapa, just FYI. But these three Kashyapa is also amazing. They themselves have their own students, 500 students of their own. That, that they are three brothers, all right? So when he went to this place called Uru Vilva, all right? he went and encountered these three brothers. Each of them, the big brothers, which is number one, Kashyapa number one, it has 500 people. The second has 300 people. The third has 200 people. So just telling you like how Buddha's disciple multiples by itself. So they, they have their own student, they already learned from him, you know, meditations, what was common back in India back then. But they, you know, heard Buddha's teaching, obviously what you heard is what they heard. Um, but because they have, you know, very deep meditative tranquility, chanting, you know, they train and practice, they can understand it better because they experience it. And, and so they become students of the Buddha indirectly through the three brothers. It's kind of like your leader become the student of the Buddha and then you're like, okay, let's learn from him because my, I trust my boss, I trust my leader. So those are all student teacher-student relationship. This shows that Buddhism is all about education. All right? So what he did is he broke the erroneous view, like saying that, you know, these six realms is not it. You have to get out of that. And, you know, they're all practicing meditation, but it's only in the six realms, not out of six realms. And we mentioned that last time, um, that the six realms is a very big and vast space. It's not small. You know, it's infinite. Yes? If, if there's a, uh, there's a really short... Piece of book, the Buddha heart. Mm. If I actually get back that book, I think that that would be it. Mm. But I just need to get back the book. That's right. So, but that book is in hospital. I actually spread in the hospital. I give out to hospital, so they have the book there. So I'm not need to get a new one. But yeah. Mm. But obviously, if that book is widespread. I think that would be it. Who who wrote the books? I, I don't know, but I, I there's oh. a book like that. I read the whole book. Okay. Obviously, you have to read the whole book. It's very short, very short. Could you share share with us what did the book says and what what which part? That one point only. One point. One point that really touches you from the book? Wisdom. Okay, what kind of wisdom? Basically, I, I don't know. It's like what, what you understand of it? Basically, compassion. Mm. Kindness. Kindness all, and all compassion. All the good qualities of you. Mm. Yes. And pra- how to practice it? Or? No, all the good qualities. Mm. Kind of, kind of. I'm not sure, I'm not sure. I need to read the book. I, I need, if there's a book here, I, I can share then That's it. It's small? Yeah, very small. Yeah. Very small. Right. Yes. I think it's called the heart Buddha. Yes. It's a sneak bit, oh, right? Yeah, 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 yes. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, like, this is like sharing, sharing, this is sharing, sharing. Oh. Yes. Is it like a lot of like rate pattern? Yes, I, I, yeah, need, yeah, I yeah. need that one. I, I, I need that oh. one. That's the one we share in uh, UQ. How can I forget? That's the book. That's actually the book. Just read yeah. the whole book and that's it. Mm. Just, just read the whole book then. then it's like quotes, right? It's collection yeah, it's of quotes. quotes. Because in terms of oh, I look like it. It's very simple. In terms of book, I like it. it. Then basically it's in your basic team. Yeah. That, that means that if you read the Buddha's heart, then mm. you actually have the Buddha's heart in your basic team already. Mm. Because you you repeat it in your mind, right? And yes, you just read, read, read that book all the time. And I think that's, it's actually more than, I don't know, I'm not, not, not really but I think that book is more important than most of the teachings. But I mean, it's, it's very important. Every teaching is very important. But that book is very important as well. Just like, that book is the same. Just like we have different, like, you know, movies, different chat titles, you know, like you chat group, talk about work, talk about social. Every group has so their own. Yeah, that's right, that's right. I'll, I'll talk about later. I'll, yeah, yeah. I yeah. That, I really we'll, we'll do it later. For now, we'll talk about Shyamuni Buddha. Okay. Yeah, in order to understand why he teaches purely. Well, obviously, that book yeah. just read, I think that's the most important book. That's right, that's right. That's that, right. that book is like, if you take that book largely, and that's it. Okay, cool. Yes. All right. Um, so, once he has the 1,000 students, he went to the famous place, Wang Shechen. Uh, if we read the uh, um, sutras, 
basically Wang Zhechen is Raja Gaka, the cities of kings, and he went back to where he came from. When he would start practicing the power of enlightenment, he went to Wang Zhechen, Raja Gaka. And Raja Gaha, he went there and went to the king, that king called Bimbisara, is the one that offered half a seat to him. If you become a lay person again, if you don't want to pursue Shramana, I'll offer half of my kingdom. That means all the estates, all the power. Oh, dear. Can you yeah. read the, the book later on? Can yeah. Can For now, promise me one thing. Who is King Bimbisara? Chinese, Chinese. Do you know Wang Shichen? Yeah. Yes, All right. Have you heard of the story of Buddha in Wang Shichen? Wang Shichen. Uh Let's practice concentration. Yes, okay. No, you can say, but only when you understand the point or you don't understand the point and then take out the point and talk about it. So, uh, yeah. The Buddha's heart, that's the, the, that's the only fact. That's right. Yes. And Buddha heart has a lot of way to show it, right? In, in that book, that that's right. That's right. It. Just, just practice yes. one thing. That that's book, right. That's, the, the, that's Buddha. That's right. That's right. Okay. So Buddha's heart, uh, when his heart brings him to Rajagaka, it is uh, Wang Shichen, and he promised to King Bimbisara, I will come back and preach the Dhamma when I attain enlightenment. So this is how Buddha operates, right? He operates from his heart. Oh, in terms of offerings, that's right. Actually, I can take more, more of the books so that I can spread the more. That's right. So, so I'm just hoping that you can get something out of this, right? Yes. That Buddha has, you know, uh, that level of. How to say the level of courage, confidence, also, you know, scale that he is not swayed by half a kingdom. Imagine right now, immediately, you get half of the estate from Bill Gates, half of the estate from Coca Cola, or the huge multinational company, control everything. You have all the monies, all the wealth, everything set up, all the stuff, everything ready for you. He has that level of scale. He understands something that important cannot sway him. Well, something important for worldly people, we are worldly people, we have to acknowledge it. Something like that cannot sway him from the path of enlightenment. That means that enlightenment is much more worth than this one. Because that leads to thousands, millions of worlds. Like when you saw the marvels and all that, you know, multiverse. This is like thousands of, and and millions of people. His heart reaches everywhere. That means he needs to get to, to the pure land. Well, enlightenment. It goes to pure land, it goes to Huayan Sujie. It doesn't matter. The state of enlightenment, right? Maybe, maybe the Marvel people, the, you know, the, those directors, maybe there's some special people as well. Maybe there's some special people. Oh, sorry, just, I'm just using a very... Yeah. Bad allegory, if, in a if, sense. If the, maybe. If the directors, if they can yeah. depict those kind of worlds in the movie, that means they have that kind of vision in, That's right. in their mind as well. Mm. Okay, sorry, uh, I digressed. Um, so I have to go back. So right now, he has come back to King Bimbisara's kingdom, which is in the place called Rajagaka. It's just one city. But the whole province is called Magadha. Anyway, name, name, names, right? The point is, he went to that city, he went back to the king, he promised, and he teach the Dharma, basically what he learned to them. And then everyone sat and listened, because the kings listened, of course the ministers, the people listened. And then everyone sat down and listened to him. And basically, up to here, you will see Buddha's pattern of propagation in the early times, up to the end of imperial China, right? Which is Qing Dynasty. Is based on king, minister, people, or head of the tribes, minister, people. It was a very recent thing that we have all these more, how to say, democratic. Nothing is bad, it's just how it works. Back then, society is like that. So, from this point onwards, you will understand that Buddha's propagation goes straight to the kings first. Because the common people still live common people life and they have their 
monks that spread among common people, but the one that with most influence that can shift thousands of people. That's why you tackle the, the best people at the start. That's right. So that you save, 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 save the most time. Yeah. Save, save most time. It's a very, he didn't plot this, right? No one plotting this. Buddhism is not plotting. It's not scheming. It's not manipulation. It's just, that's how it works. In terms of Western paradigm, that's right. Actually, the t- there's actually no time frame. That's right. And no, I mean, I mean, but I mean, yeah, human body wise, then, then yeah. there's time frame. But I mean, I, I mean, if you go to Western paradigm, there's actually no time frame. Yeah. So no time frame, and basically the day and night mm. is actually. It's non-existent in there. It's a world of light. That's it. Yeah. So yeah. basically, in this. Human practice is basically if you sleep, it's basically because that your your body is tired. That's why you sleep because it's a human body form. That's why you sleep. We are in a desire realm, which is the heaviest of the form realm. But I, I actually yeah. in the past, before I went to hospital, I, the times like I, I I have two days, two nights without sleeping and walking around. So mm. it, without sleeping, you actually can see more things. But actually, don't don't do it all the time because otherwise your eyes will crack. So yeah. To be honest, like right now, we 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 um. We are human, and we rely on body to practice. But, but I try, so we need to sleep. I, I, I try two days without sleeping. Yeah. But obviously, if you say the normal people, they think you're crazy. Of course. I mean, it's an interesting point. I'll come back to that later. So um, when when he preaches that, right to this um, king, and the king was listening, he's like, "I when I was crowned prince, I have two, I have two, I have two wishes. I have two agendas. That's it." First, to be king, inherit my father's kingdom, estate. Second, is to listen to the Buddha, because back then Buddha is already, well, the prince Siddhartha like, of neighboring kingdom, go out and become a, want to be enlightened. So I want to listen from this Buddha, who, when he gained enlightenment, I want to be the first of the king to listen to him. So he can have that, well, wishes, and his wishes came true, because he's very sincere um, about that. So, when he listened to it, he understood, he decided to take refuge in Triple Gem and become the first king who became a lay Buddhist. And that offered uh, that influenced the rest of the kingdom. And then that's when he gave Zhu Ling Jing Se, which is famous. He gave the place called Venu Vara, a park in the bamboo grove. So it's basically a place carved out of a bamboo forest for him to live. Alright? That is the first temple. Of Buddhism, first sangha, first temple, right? Within the span of uh, maybe months, so this called Venu Vana Bamboo Grove has been so um, important because a lot of Buddhist temple or uh, um, monastic residents called Zhuling Jingse in Taiwan, Taiwan you can see a lot Zhuling Jingse or in the place where Buddhism has influenced. Um, yeah, so the three kashyapa is just. Something I have realized is not the same person, so I, I will hold back from the ten disciples. I think in terms of AliExpress, this jacket is actually the best jacket in my in my opinion. I think the ADHD oh, is <laughs> stronger than me. It's actually extremely good. But obviously, it's just like twenty two dollars, so it's not expensive. Oh, this jacket. Thank you. Yeah. This jacket. I mean, if you have enough fuba, then you can wear. It. Have you read? Did this check out? Uh, you, you, wait, wait, wait. Leo, Leo, Lim, uh, Mei You, you really want that? The, these are the colors of the lotus. I actually wear it before. Yeah. And walk, walking the street. But obviously, this jacket, uh, then, then, okay, this jacket should be widespread. Obviously, I don't have money now. If someone can borrow me money, I can buy one this well. Yeah. Okay. I mean, buy, buy for a lot of people to wear it. So it's actually extremely good. Just $22. Hmm. $22. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. All right. Um, Kenny, yes. can we let the session proceed? Okay. We'll talk about the, the Alibaba stuff one to one later. Sure. Shall we? Sure. Okay. okay. I, I would like to want, um, can you promise me one thing? Yeah. We, um, when we're doing this, we talk about what we're talking about. Sure. Right? We'll talk about Alibaba later. Just you and me. Can you promise me? Sure. Like, yeah, promise me. Yeah. Okay, let's do it. Just you and me, yeah? I'm going to share the Mu Yu for you. Right? It's very good, it's pretty useful. So for now, we, we focus. Let's learn this, right? Let's focus on Buddha and his story. 
right? The three kashyapa. Mm. Why do I learn this? Because we understand that this Buddhism is not just as offering again. Then it says the, the gift possible. and take, right? Actually, never really yeah. Yeah. But now I'm just offering. It, is it? All right. Okay. okay. So I'm offering to everyone that this, you know, this is a step by step process to be. A Buddhism that we know nowadays. Okay, this is how it works, and when we learn from this, hopefully we can bring in our current life and understand that, you know, those are, you know, you have to fix yourself first. But he fixed himself. He understand what's going on. He overcome the temptations, and now he become the Buddha. And now he has the ability, the confidence, uh, full genuine heart, full genuine intention to help people without problems. So he has the ability, and he accord with the condition. He didn't force his way. He didn't impose. He didn't evangelize. He didn't do that kind of thing. All he did is opening up a channel where people can come in. Right? That's different from forcing things down your throat. It's just basically open up, telling his student, you know already, our hard path, spread the words so that everyone can know. Back then, there was no classification that as much as. Later, it's how it works, right? Early science as well. They don't classify it that much. They just talk about you know nature and how it works. They don't classify it as chemistry, biology, or anything. So same as Buddhism. Early dawn, that simple. Gain arahat, move on, spread, and then whether the path of the arahat is going towards hiding in a place, just practice by themselves because I already gained enlightenment. I don't need to worry about that. I have no worries of death and life. Or I'm going out there. I'm going to spread the word. I'm going to suffer the people who suffers. I'm going to understand what they're suffering about. I'm going to help them out of it in their own condition. That becomes bodhisattva, and eventually, that thinking becomes more rich, more refined, more pronounced. From physics, become quantum physics, general physics, and stuff like that. This is how it works. Same goes for this. This is how human minds work. All right. So, okay. Another story is the youth who begs for direction. This is just basically、um, the title of the story. Buddha continues from this timeline. He moved to a place in this kingdom, Rajagaka, Wangsecheng, the, ki- the kingdom where the king gives out his city to the Buddha. The youth who begs for direction, all right, is a very interesting case. He's a guy who went in the middle of a city and he just pray, pray for directions. And then he prayed to the heaven. He prayed to the earth. I actually tried. You tried? Yeah. Tried. So you just like the youth over there. He's 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 very sincere. He's very pure. He he's doing his stuff. Yeah. I actually that's the time before I went to Emmett's hospital again, and and basically it's like I saw before that time I was in the tree, in the garden, in the indigenous garden in Sydney Harbour or something. And basically I saw the sun and moon. They came up in the sky together. Oh. Obviously,、mm. and mental health is very mentally tough as well in the hospital. I know. It's tough as well, right? Mental、so、health. I, I do not want to go to hospital again. Of right. But obviously, hospital is like a place to practice as well. But, but obviously, it's best to be free.、So yeah. We all want to be free, right? Free in walking wise in human world than not in hospital. But I mean, hospital kind of.、Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. So, I hold on to that thought first. So, the the youth who pray to the ground and top, he just lost his father. Basically, the Buddha asked, "Why do you do that? Why do you go pray four directions and very sincere? But why? Why is it?" And then the stu- the youth was like, "Oh, my father told me to pray four directions and heaven before he passed away." It's actually、sure. from a monk that asked me to say that、mm. all directions is actually like is actually make more things that are not so hard to find. Yes, the direction is hold on to the thought. So let's continue because I'll, I'll I'll finish with that one because it's like jump. Direction basically is like there's no direction in terms of that Western kind of there's no direction. There's no I, 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 direction is based on our.、Uh, Attachment. To, we need to know where because. But this human yeah. Human world wise, then you need you need you need, you need to know where. But obviously, my direction is not good. Yes. 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 Obviously, everyone needs direction. Yeah. Google Maps as well. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And、um, so we have the four directions, and the Buddha asked why you do that, 
And he said, Father's told me to do that. So the Buddha says, South. So look what he did, right? He said, Oh, I think you misunderstood your father's intention. All right? Let me tell you what it means on each direction. If you pray to the South, it means you respect your teachers. When you respect and love and, and, and adhere to their teachings, you are praying to the South. When you're praying to the West, you need to protect and love your wife and children. If you protect and love your wife and children, that means you have fulfilled your father's order to pray to the, to the West. When you pray to the North, right, you need to honor... What is that? Anyway, you need to honor your parents. Honor, love, xiao right. And uh, wait, hold, hold on, hold on. And then the last one is when you pray to the heavens, you know that means you need to have that mindset of or, of respectful to the sages, brahmanas, shramanas, saman, uh, fan, fan zhi. Um, sorry, I, I have my. Actually, can I have my term first? I actually yeah. experienced this for for, yeah. for, for them. Actually, I went to the indigenous park and basically they have the, the, yeah. cap, like the statue thing. Yeah. Basically, what I do is prostration, but not normal prostration. It's mm. actually full prostration. Mm. Full prostration to... Wu Ti Tou Ti. Yes, to, yeah. to, to all those... Like a whole, whole, whole body laying on the ground. Yeah, to, to all those... To all those statues, mm. they're actually, I think this is really good practice as well. I'm pretty sure they have that same ideas as well, respect for all directions. Yeah, that's why I yeah. full practice, I feel like mm. down here is a little bit changing. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. That's good. So, if we understand what Buddha did here, right? he didn't say, no, 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 you shouldn't do this, it's not what it means. He redirected. He just redirected. He just point it to the direction where he can channel the energy into something that generates good, good, good stuff that benefits him in the long run. Something actually effective and productive. And, 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 and he did. And he became his student. So this is how Buddha teach. He has no certain shape and form. He follows whatever the forms his student is or his you know, opposite side is. Opposite side. As in the people he's dealing with. Right? So whatever you think, he would think the way you think. That level of flexibility is only possible when there is no ego. There is no, like, as in no ego, as in no false sense of self. Barrier is down. He has no need for barrier because there's nothing to worry on, to be hurt. There's nothing to be hurt. There's nothing to be um, attacked on because he has no false sense of self. He understood his real self there are self in Buddhism, right? Contrary to a lot of people who only listen to first half of the Buddha's teaching and not understand the rest, Buddha do not say there's no self in the sense of absolutely empty nothing. That is attachment to emptiness, which is something we haven't done, but that is another extremes, another, how to say, that end in Buddhism. That is not something we should learn. What we should learn is understand that this are full self, the bodies, the mind, the you know the five skandhas basically se which is physical show which is the sensation the feeling the sensation yes. wait xiang is the thought xing is the endless wandering thoughts you know the endless workings of the universe and then shi which is our consciousness when we mention about the eight consciousness it's okay it's right you can uh, you can have the call it's right yeah yeah so, so what I'm trying to say is when, when that sense of self is no longer polluting or obstructing you from your true self, when you reach behind this, beyond this, the true self is everyone. You know, everyone... Yeah, yeah it's okay. Yeah. So, um, the everyone is like light bulbs. All right. Oh, you have to uh, pull it. Yeah, push it. Pull it. Thank you. It's like three light bulbs, right? Can you differentiate the light from the first light bulb, from the second, from the third? No. They are all together. They are not against each other. So, but does that negate the fact that the light source came from three light bulbs? No. So three light bulbs are unique, independent, yet they merge each other perfectly in perfect sync, perfect harmony. That's how Buddha works. He has no, how to say, 
oh, nothing. He is Buddha. But Buddha is just a name as well. Just set up a structure so that we can understand. But among them, you can't use the word, hence the Chinese word, 不可思,不可意. You cannot think about it because it beyonds consciousness. You cannot um, talk about it. This, because using words, you already split them into duality. You falsely segregate the light. Uh, I actually found the power of food up. Oh, yeah. Could you get it for me? Sure. Yeah, yeah. You can come back later. It's okay. I can, I can distribute yeah. it. You can uh, take like six books. Sure, to us. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Take your time. No rush. A good walk. Have a good walk. So, yeah. Everyone has their own unique, independent um, thoughts, but they are not supposed, they are not supposed to seg- uh, segregate from each other. So, that's how Buddhas can connect with Buddhas. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Yes. Amitabha. Yep. Alright. Yeah. Alright. So obviously, just. See, um, so, I'm saying just. I'm saying, you know, this is the best one. That's right, yeah. He's uh, practicing giving, right? And then, there are merits of receiving as well, guys. So, giving and receiving. It takes two to make. This one, to tango. Read the whole book. That's it. Yeah. Read the whole book. Make sure, make sure you read the whole book. It's been a while since I have it's this. Extremely short, but obviously there's more there. It does to spread more to people as well. That's right. Hmm. I, I mean, I Thank you. you. Make sure you read the whole book. Read the whole book. Yeah. Read, read the whole book. Yeah. You, you need to read this. Read the whole book, then you get that all the information from the book. Hmm. So yeah, make sure you read the whole book and daily practice. This this should be the daily practice. Yes. You know what? Next session, I will do this. We'll, we'll, we'll go into each of these clause. Oh, sure, sure, sure. We'll talk about that. Very looking forward. Looking forward. Promise? Yeah. But you have, one, one, you have one promise you have to make to me. Yeah. When we have the session going on, when you want to speak, raise your hand. Okay. And if we're, if we're, not, if we're continuing, you have to hold up your thought first. Uh, your I'm thought fine. is precious. I'm all right? Fine, I'm fine. Okay? I'm, I believe you can do it. I'm yeah? I'm really trying. Okay. It's very happy. Take your time. I know, I know you want to share this, right? It's beautiful. It's boundless. But I, I, I go back. Take your time. Yeah. I go back. Yeah, go, go. Yeah. Okay. So, when, when Buddha's doing this, he, he merged into the world of other people. You know? My world and your world is one. And that's how, that's how he saw in harmony of everyone else. Can I take one for my mom? Yeah. Oh, and my grandma's got actually two more. Go ahead. Take as much as you want. Yeah. Okay, guys, uh, I'll stop here because the U44 direction is the end of my study. And uh, I'll continue with the more interesting one later where thousands of other huts gather in one place. Holy moly. Without prior understanding, knowledge. They just happen to gather in one place. And that happens to be the first congregation of the Buddha uh, of the Sangha so uh, so far anyone has any uh, thing to share about it maybe the light bulbs allegory or something I love it I always think about when I have some conflict think of your light bulbs you know, my light and his light you know, or her light it might not be together all the time but you know, it doesn't negate the fact that we still need to be in sync yeah. So, yeah. I'll keep quiet now for 15 minutes I like the part where you said to push the boundary. Yeah. It's how we grow our merits, wealth, fortunes. All comes in one, I think. Uh, what do you think? Yeah. Sometimes you feel bad that it feels uncomfortable, but. Mm. My world is big, getting bigger. Yeah. Hmm. Anyone else? Pushing your own boundaries. Enlarging your scales. Hmm. Yeah. Your height as well. Those are very positive things, you know. Buddhism is not about sitting in the mountains. I have to emphasize because a lot of people misunderstood. Go to the retreat, eat vegetarian food and then meditate that's it that's not 
it's helping us to settle down, which is, which is something I need personally. But it's also very positive. And for, you, you expand, you grow, you, 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 you see bigger worlds than you used to. Mm. Other hearts can see bigger worlds than Sotapana. You know, Sotapana can see bigger than Anagami. Or the other way around. Sutohan, Sutohan, Anahan. Anyway, the higher you get, the bigger the world you see, the bigger the heart you can, the bigger you can take, the more patience you have. Mm. Or anything you have in, in previous months, you know, what you experienced. No? You know, you want to share, but not there. <laughs> it's fine. When you come for the book. Yeah. Maybe after. After? Do you guys want to have coffee after? Free to have coffee today? Post lunch coffee? Yeah. But I have some time with Kenny first, Kenny and her mom. Uh, I didn't know about his condition until today. Kenny's condition. Yeah. I have no idea. But as a psychologist and doctor here. Yeah. Don't make assumptions. Don't make assumptions, right? That's right. No, but I think he's very, he's very, yeah. Very enthusiastic. He enthusiastic, yeah. He doesn't like hospital. Right. I do, I do like admire his energy. I don't have that energy anymore. That, that level of, you know, want to go and do it. Get things done. Yeah. That's where I know I'm approaching that level at the age. <sighs> anyway, uh, yeah, thank you guys. Like, we have like 10 minutes to go. Um, what about our activities? Like, we might have something like barbecues or, you know, in roads. We have a trial run in my help, my apartment for sushi. We can have like a, you know, hangout in the Olympic Park. For yeah, actually, the free moments for actually spread to the most actually kung fu in the Shaolin Temple. Yeah, yeah, share with them. I think they will love it. Just read the whole book and I think that's it. Just, yeah. And we should take the of just one thing. Then. Do you read it yourself? I, re- I, re- I read once. I read once that entire book. That's it. But obviously, it's in basic, but obviously, you need to strengthen this a lot. Then they, so, repeat, repeat it, right? Yeah, daily practice. Yeah, twice, yeah, then. daily practice. Every day, one piece. Yeah. Actually, Kenny, I actually have this like few copies at home. One more to the Shaolin sure. Shaolin oh, students. Yes. Yes. It's very short. It's very short. Just look. It's very short. Yeah. Very easy to do. Yeah. Can you ask yourself something? It's easy. It's easy. Yeah. 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 Obviously, just make sure you read every day daily practice twice. But obviously, if you read, 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 then it's good already. You already have that already in your brain when you see it. How do we develop the quiet, even state of mind? I, I'm not sure. I, I just read once. I mean, obviously, daily practice twice, not, not strength and strong enough yet. But obviously, not. Yet. Mm. Okay, so just mm. keep offering, offering, offering. Mm. What if people, when you offer to other people, do they. If they don't want it, would you still give it to them or you would be like, okay, it's fine? Okay, it's fine. Mm, that's good. You can't force them. Can't force that's them. right. Never force people. But obviously, you give them what they can actually, the capacity they can take. That's right. The capacity. And do you like interact with them first, trying to understand what they understand first before you give? Yeah. Oh, yeah. But obviously, if you're in a level, then you can basically just look at them and you know, can they take or not? Obviously, if you give them, you know mm. when is the correct time to give as well. Shaolin mm. temple wise, if you see, if this one, if in terms of giving, I think if you're in the Buddhist temple, then everybody would like to have one of it. So, so Kenny, are you still in like, um, like, are you still studying Uni, or Macquarie Uni? Macquarie Uni. Oh, what do you study as? Exercise and sports science. Oh. That's why in the Shaolin temple, then yeah. But obviously, I prefer more. Is it the Shaolin temple in China or the branch here? The branch here. Like they have like a martial arts club. Yes. Oh, what did they what did they teach? It's a Shaolin Kung Fu, right? Yeah, yeah, and basically play sports there, uh, doing like gym or like boxing, oh. all those stuff. Like yeah, you have well built. You look well built. So this yeah. like the soft, the tenderness, and the, mm. 
because obviously I think they are like the 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 vulnerable there are like special people, you know. Mm. You can see from their eyes. They know you. you. Actually, read the whole book, then you you will be able to. Find Did they read this book over there? I, I read the whole book already. That's what you're sharing with them. You go into their temple. I, I will. I will. Oh. I, I will later. When I have time. When, and. When and did they teach you like meditations or you know do you have to live there for a week like a retreat 100% immersed in it is that a program like that no no just just, mm. just play martial arts and basically free dinner free dinner every oh. day oh yeah yeah dinner. vegetarian dinner right yeah, yeah. of course everyone should be vegetarian to be honest it's true it's true where is this Regent's Park you just search, search in Google Map and that's it Time. Regions Park, yeah? Okay. Go, go there, go there. Just mm. to exchange opinion. Okay. Obviously. You know the name of the master? You know, what's the name of the master? <coughs> you can use Chinese. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know, but just go to there, please. Just mm. go to Regions Park Shaolin Temple. Mm. Obviously, if you're here already, then I think you have enough good quality to go in already. Oh. Well, my f- my physical quality is not there. And I haven't been running for months. <laughs> physical quality is fine because they, they train you yeah. wherever your level is, up to your level capacity. I only can do 10 push ups. Yeah, then they, they train you different things up. To, they, 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 they will see what they, they, they train you because mm. their level is more, more, more than you can think. Like, they train you what you, you're, you, you're able to do only. They, they, they know you, they want to see your level, they only give whatever the level you can and push you a little bit. Yes, yes. Right? Like giving, yeah, push you a little bit. Um, you don't really need to master that skill, but obviously, if, mm. if they think you can master the skill, then you can master the skill. Like, yeah. Do you, like, okay, so do you know the story of Shaolin Monk? The or, origin story? I don't know. Can I share? Can I share? you want to know? Yeah, sure. Offering me. The year was 1,000... Okay, anyway, anyway. So between Han Dynasty and Tang Dynasty, there is this splintered period after the three kingdoms, Cao Cao and all that. There is that period where Buddhism in India is... It's developed. Oh, wait. But the kings is I'm more... Saying, I think you should take two more to share with people around you as well. Because if you, have, if you, just, you, if you just have one book, that means that... She, she, just, she only has one it's not enough for her later later. we can also share after we finish reading yeah, yeah. Rem, rem. But, but you don't have you need to find ways to share share it as well that's why it takes time but obviously if you have two more books now yeah she already has it at home a lot yes. oh. yeah, yeah. 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 yeah as a thankful for yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Oh. Oh, you want it back? Yes, you have it already. That's yes, why. Yes, you want it? Yeah. <laughs> we actually have it already. So share it with your shouting brothers and sisters. So the story is Sui Dynasty. Well, not Sui. Basically, Bodhidharma. Have you guys heard Bodhidharma? Putidamo, the OG, the founder who brings Zen Buddhism all the way from Buddha into China, and first Chinese sure monk. Sure hey. You're the guy who went to Shaolin area. Listen, listen. Yes. So he, you need to know the story of the school. Sure. It's very important. So, have you heard Bodhidharma before? Pote Dhamma. Right, that's your Zhou Xie, grandfather of your, the school. Great grandfather of the school. Zhu Si Ye. Oh. Mm, think of it. Remember his name. He's the one who had founded Sek Bodhidharma. Sek Wang hmm? hey. the current one. Sek Wang Yusun. Yeah. Talk to your teacher and say Bodhidharma. Puti Dhamma, that's the founding teacher. He came from India, right? Kenny, he went from India and he bring the Dharma from the Fatou. Mm. Uh, my own Tafa, uh, Saika Monefat, Saimuni Buddha. He went into India and then the first patriarch in China, right, is uh, Sen Xiu. Sen Xiu? Anyway, the first patriarch of Zen Buddhism. And there, before that, he went to so- Siu Lamzi. Siu Lamzi. Obviously, in yeah. terms of, oh, if, if you spread this book around, I think it's fine for getting a free VIP airplane. Obviously, it doesn't need to be the best plane, but can, 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 can get to a plane to different places to travel. No problem. We'll talk about that later. So we're make talking sure, about... Make sure you spread the book. And make sure you read the whole book. Well, I'm talking about your great-grandparents. Uh, a, a, a generation, right? So what we learned is in Shaolin Temple, he was there waiting for his first student in China. Yes. Passed down the Zen. And Shaolin Temple is where he passed down the Kung Fu that you're learning, right? I don't know what iteration is it now, thousands of years. But he's the one that passed down the 
martial arts to the monks in Shaolin because I think there's a need to do it because of the I don't know invading armies it was a messy time oh yeah. obviously anyway. oh, I, I read this self defense I, I read this yeah. in terms of the emperor before the, the, the Shaolin temple there used to be an army of monks to protect the empire yeah that's Han Dynasty yeah which is uh, 800 years after Christ obviously Shaolin temple in terms of martial arts practices like for young people there's like an uh, enjoyment of like uh, Sports or something like that. That's why people are into Shaolin. It's it's good. It's really healthy. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's why mm. we're into Shaolin Temple. Mm. But obviously, it's good good to go there for daily practice for for body fit outfit. You can also learn their meditation as well if they give it. Yeah, it's yes. good for you. Yes. Mind and body, right? Yeah, One thing. Very good. Temple is yeah. Very good. Learn meditation. Learn their meditation. Shaolin Temple and here basically in Regent's Park. And here, oh, train station wise, just few stations, just few stations. Regent's Park. Yeah. yeah. We heard of it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Kenny. All right, so we'll end this here uh, today. Um, yeah, as I say, the plan for like BBQ might happen next month. Are you guys having anything next month? Is next month free? Free for everyone? Yeah. Kenny, are you free next month? Yes, I will, I'll be free for everything here. Yeah. Okay, no problem. I'll try to be free if I'm we'll have a We'll have our one on one one day, yeah? Sure, sure. Okay, so. Uh, Just read the whole book and then that's it, that's we'll it. share about the book one on one, yeah? Okay, so right now we'll continue. No, no, one on one, should be everyone. Well, yeah, I will, once I understand what you're trying to share, and then we can share with everyone. I'm, sorry, I, I'm not understanding this yet because I, that's why we're talking about it. We will talk about it together, yeah, yeah. over a coffee or something. Okay, so right now, and you can teach me some fitness stuff as well. I need to run. Obviously, I, obviously I want a little bit of money to buy the jacket as well. The jacket widespread as well as well. The jacket, you know. The jacket, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. All right, so we'll end this today um, by praying Buddha three times. Oh, there's actually a story of offering in in in, in the in in, in the in, in the in, in the Sicha Maui for doing the guest with this as well. Uh, uh, you can share with me first sure. because we're doing it now. Sure, sure, sure. So yeah, we'll finish this first. Okay, now. Ready? Uh, so three prostration and one bow. Bye. Chi. Bye. Chi. San bye. Chi. Wen Xun. Chi. Let's dedicate our merits. Uh, may the merits and virtue adorn the Buddha's pure land, repay the four kinds of kindness above, and relieve the sufferings from the three paths below. May those who see and hear of this uh, heart of, from the heart of understanding and compassion uh, be vowed to born together in the land of ultimate bliss. Amitofo. Thank you everyone so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Uh, I, I, yeah, I'll, I'll, it's, it's best to wear that jacket, but yeah. <laughs> the colorful one, right? Yeah. It's really colorful. What, what, what is your favorite color? That, that color. Black color? No, no, not that color. That color attracts me. The, the rainbow color. The, yeah, the rainbow color. That's good. Attract, it attracts all the lights, you know. When, when you walk outside, it attracts all the lights. So basically, I'm trying to Yeah, it's very good. That's good. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming. Could you fold the the yeah, thank you. Let me turn off the um aircon. I'll have lunch first. I barely touched it. <laughs>